what is up gemini welcome to your general timeless reading these are timeless so whenever you see this is when it's most meant for you these are also general so take what resonates leave the rest my name is jordan i am a reiki master and i do personal tarot readings so if you want to book either a reiki session or a personal tarot reading you can do so down below through my website in the description box um, other than that, check out my Patreon channel. That's where I do monthly readings, energy shift readings, moon cycle readings, and weekly Patreon only videos. I also take those monthly readings and I post them on Vimeo for you guys to purchase your individual monthly if you would like to do so. Other than that, like, share, subscribe, give this video a thumbs up, hit that notification bell so you see when I post and when I go live. And let's get into it, Gemini. Let's see what's going on for you guys. Um... I don't know why I really want to use Energy Oracle for you for some reason. I don't typically do Oracle decks on YouTube though. I save that for my Patreon channel. Um, yeah, let's do uh, Beautiful Creatures. All the tarot decks I use are going to be linked in the description box for you guys. Okay, so let's see what's going on. For Gemini, Sun, Rising, Venus, and Jupiter. If you're new to tarot or not new to tarot, I highly recommend checking out How to Interpret Tarot as a Viewer. It's a video I created linked down below so you understand energy, masculine, and feminine, and just how to interpret these videos, okay? Show me what I'm mostly you see for Gemini, Sun, Rising, Venus, and Jupiter. They show me swans. Swans to me are very, um, I don't like talking about this topic much, but, um, it makes sense with what's going on in the collective. It's very twin flamey to me, swans. Swans are very like soulmate, very like lovey-dovey um, energy. They're very divine, very regal, very um, higher consciousness also. Energy to me, very, very, I wanna say clean, like just very um, pure energy. So if you've been in a, in what you would define as a twin flame dynamic, I will make a video on what my opinion of a twin flame is at some point, I, I have some things lined up for you guys. Um, but if you're in a very deep or spiritual connection with another individual, romantic or not, um, cause twin flame dynamics do not always have to be romantic. That's kind of what this feels like. Yeah, I just heard connections and contracts. Connections and contracts. Knight of Swords, which is Gemini energy. It's really funny. Uh, idealism is what it's called in this particular deck. Knight of Swords. This is your energy coming out here. I keep hearing the word forever with this. Um, this feels um, feels like forever binding. It, it just feels like contracts. It just it literally feels like contracts. It feels like two people being, it, Gemini is the twins, but this feels like uh, magnetic, right? Being very stuck, very tied to somebody, kind of craving that individual in your, I want to say in your sphere at this moment. It doesn't feel, some of you might be dealing with some codependency things still at this moment, but not necessarily. I know part of the collective, there's a pocket of the collective still dealing with codependency. That's been a theme lately. What else do we have for Gemini? <laughs> the two of swords came out again. I literally just put it back. That's funny. Confusion. <laughs> two of swords is Libra energy. We have a lot of air energy going on. This feels like a teeter-totter. It's almost like contemplating if you do want to communicate to this person. Um, it feels like a true expression of self, honestly. Um, wanting to express genuinely the expectations of this dynamic what you want from them how you want things to unfold right just want to be very clear about the intentions you have with them and it's almost like should i really say this should i not say this it kind of feels like that It, it feels like it, it doesn't feel blunt it doesn't feel harsh it feels very like i want to be gentle with how i say this but i want to be very honest because it kind of feels like you don't want to go round and round again i feel like you've been through this cycle with this person yeah nine of swords but there's the anxiety the stress about it like should i even bother is it worth it between the nine and the two of swords is the seven of swords energy which means that there's this feeling of 
I, I could be sabotaging the situation if I don't approach it properly. Okay, and there that just feels like fear. It just feels like there's a lot of fear It's kind of like you're walking on eggshells a little bit There's a lot of air energy going on here, which makes sense Gemini's mercurial You might be overthinking this kind of sitting in an eight of swords energy I don't know why they're bringing up Mars right now Mars is in Leo Mars in Leo um, Eight of swords. There it is Eight of Swords and Queen of Wands. <laughs> Leo energy to me as a reader, but it is Aries. Um, it's Leo to me as a reader. And then we have the Ace of Pentacles in reverse. Okay, Ace of Pentacles is Earth energy. That's funny. Eight of Swords. <laughs> um, and the bottom of the deck, we have Scorpio energy with Death in reverse. So yeah, you're going through a really big transformation. You're really wanting this rebirth, wanting to go through a new cycle uh, Ace of Pentacles to me is second chances, wanting a second chance with this individual, wanting to actually just, um, wanting to take a leap of faith, which is more so the Fool card, but it's, it's strange that that phrase just came out with the Ace of Pentacles. Ace of Pentacles is a very tangible energy. It's wanting to actually have a, a tangible something with them. Like, I want an actual relationship with you. I want to start a business with you. I want to build a home with you, a family with you. I want something with you that is in the tangible, in the physical, right? Um, it's not just like, I want to have emotions or passion with you. It's, I, I want to build something, create something with you of substance. Um, there's a lot of fear having to do with this, with all this air energy, all the swords coming up. Eight of swords, this queen of wands. Queen of wands in reverse is someone who's lacking a little bit of confidence right now. This is obviously the feminine energy wanting to communicate this. Um, this queen of wands in reverse, this Mars energy just keeps coming up. Even though it's Aries, it is Leo for me as a reader. Mars is in Leo. Um, Mars and Leo, it's not it's not a bad placement right now. It's just, it creates a lot of ambition. It can also create a lot of frustration though at the same time. Um, feeling as if like you're blocked or you can't really move forward. Um, I don't feel like that's what this person feels. I feel like it's just kind of like an irritation. Like um, it, it's like a little blocked, but it's almost like blocked because of their own overthinking, their own fear of what if I don't approach it properly. And then with death in reverse, yeah, underneath that is the Hierophant, which is indicative of contracts, relationships, institutions, marriage, things of that nature, right? This relationship is going to go through that second chance, especially with the Hierophant there. It's that's Saturn square Uranus. We've been talking about this for a while, especially if you're on my Patreon channel. We've been talking about this forever. That Saturn square Uranus aspect that peaked on the 14th of June was all about breaking down old contracts for them to be rewritten. And that's basically what this is. Somebody wanting to communicate how to rewrite a contract, which is really nice. It's really nice. It's kind of like, hey, this hasn't been working for me. I want to fix this. How can we fix this? Can you fix this with me? Let's do that. Cool. I like it. Now let's see uh, this other person involved because I have a feeling they are going to come out relatively soon. Um, let's do Manga Tarot. King of Pentacles. Oh, my nose just got itchy. If you're new to my channel, my nose gets itchy. I yawn, my face gets itchy, my nose runs anytime I start channeling. So <laughs> all kinds of weird stuff happens and that's okay. <laughs> okay, so let's look at this, um, let's look at this Knight of Swords. I sort of turmoil with the Knight of Swords. I think that this is a mindset. I think this is someone sitting in a lot of worry. I feel like this is like a self-imposed energy, like working yourself up a lot, right? Let's look at this Knight of Swords. Yeah, I feel, it feels like a three of swords almost. Yeah, judgment in reverse. It's like, um, I don't know why I keep hearing solidarity, um, but it also feels like uh, karmic cycles. This feels like someone who's kind of isolating themselves. It's like, I want to say something, but I can't say something. So I'm going to isolate myself um, out of a fear of repeating something in the past that I'm accustomed to or experiencing something that I've already experienced, aka like a pain, right? Well, 
for example, a pain, not like AK, right? Let's look at Knight of Swords again. Let's get one more on this. Judgment is Pluto, Scorpio energy. Yeah, magician. That's a misuse of their power or latent power. They're giving their power away to their fear, right? To their insecurities. Magician reverses Mercurial, more Gemini Virgo energy uh, going on here. This is, this is, um, I really want to say this is a misunderstanding. It's a misunderstanding of higher self though. It's not a misunderstanding with this other individual. It's a misunderstanding of, of their higher self. They're letting their ego take the wheel right now because the ego is where your fears, your insecurities, um, limiting beliefs and whatnot, that's where they're rooted, right? So when that takes the steering wheel of your thought process, that is what's going to drive the ship. That's what's going to dictate your actions, your thoughts, and how you communicate with people. And that's what's happening with this Knight of Swords right now, and that's what's creating all this anxiety and this stall out and this lack of confidence, right? Queen of Wands in reverse. That's not what we want. And that's not what this person wants either. They just need to remember that they're they're a very powerful creator. They're a magician, right? They have all the tools they need necessary in order to have this conversation and approach this person and heal this um, within themselves and within their own thought process. Because we control our thoughts, we control our own, our own emotions. And I know easier said than done, but it's it's the matter of reminding yourself of how powerful you are to do that. And the mind's a very powerful thing, right? Let's look at the two of swords tower. Yeah. So there's, so with the two of swords and the tower, it's this, do I want to have this conversation? Do I want to break this contract or do I not want to break the contract? It's that indecision. Do I want to approach them? Do I not want to approach them? Do I want to trigger this tower moment or do I not want to trigger this tower moment? You want to trigger the tower and the tower is going to happen. It's going to happen. There's no avoiding it. Lovers in reverse. Yep, there it is. Breaking the imbalance contract, the old foundation. It has to come down. Gemini energy. You're popping up all over the place in your own reading. You got the magician, the knight of swords, the lovers. You are all over your own reading. The eight of swords. There you are. You're everywhere. You're showing up, buttercup. That's good. That's good. I like that. <sighs> But this old contract does have to come down because it's not serving you. It's actually keeping you in the state of a high anxiety, limiting beliefs. And it might have a lot to do with you um, perceiving, how do I say this? It might be a sense of the past being dubbed over the present, right? Like, what if this from the past happens again in my present moment? That's fear, false evidence appearing real, right? F-E-A-R. Fear, false evidence appearing real. It's, it's, it's not the reality of things, but that's your ego trying to protect you from experiencing that fear again. So what's the ego do? It perpetuates a story in your mind of something that could possibly happen when in all reality, it might never happen. It might never happen. Something amazing can happen, but you'll never experience that something amazing because your ego is preventing you from taking that leap of faith to experience it. So let's look at the nine of swords. Ace of Swords, and it came out sideways, more so in reverse. Um, yeah, this this anxiety is not your authentic truth, and you know that. You know that it's rooted in the ego. Ace of Swords in reverse, right? It's distortion. It's distortion. Lies, 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 lies. And that's okay, because this is an aspect of your shadow that you're working through, which makes a lot of sense, because on July 15th, we have Chiron retrograding in Aries. So we're basically preparing ourselves to integrate a lot of our old wounds and aspects of ourselves that need to be healed, because Aries is the sign of self, and Chiron's the wounded healer. So what's it going to do? It's going to bring up all the aspects of ourselves that we need to address that we might have been suppressing, right? So let's look at the Eight of Swords. Queen of Cups, Seven of Swords, and the Three of Wands. Okay, there, you have a lot of love for this person. A lot of love for this person with the Queen of Cups there. It's a very feminine, very nurturing, very loving energy. It's Cancer energy. Oh, there's a card hiding behind this. And the Ten of Pentacles, okay, I see what's going on here. 
<sighs> you might have a habit of, I, I call it the runner. I call it the runner, right? So, you know those relationships when you get in a relationship and it's like, let's say you fight about something as silly as, well, you didn't text me back right away and it triggered your ego to feel rejected, right? When in all reality, they might have just been busy and left you on red and your ego is like, oh my gosh, what if they're with somebody else? What if they're cheating on me? What if they're this? What if they're that? All these scenarios, right? And so what's your ego do? Your ego triggers the runner mentality. And what's the runner mentality? Well, I'm gonna make something that's really small into something that's really big to give myself an excuse, to isolate myself, to shut down emotionally, to push this person away so I can be by myself because I'm safer by myself than allowing another individual into this dynamic, into my world. Because when I let other people in, that means that I have to be vulnerable. And that means that I have the opportunity to potentially get hurt. Now, I don't like that, right? So, you have the opportunity to be vulnerable, to be the Queen of Cups. Eight of Swords, that scares the living hell out of you. So what do you do? You have a habit of self-sabotaging, Ten of Pentacles, long-term foundations, contracts. This is what you are breaking down. This is what the tower is here to stop you from doing because you recognize it. You're like, okay, listen, I got, I got a potential ten of pentacles here. I have a relationship or I did or dynamic or situation that is legacy energy. That's something that will really last the test of time. That's something that's super, super stable. And there's something in me that recognizes that but is really scared that it might potentially come crumbling down. And because I don't want to experience it crumbling down, I might run from it or find a way to sabotage it or find a reason to just leave it before it ever can crumble down. Because I don't, I don't want to go through that pain of watching it crumble, right? It's basically, I have the potential to grow so big, but what if I grow so big and people tear me down? Well, I should never grow big then because it's just not worth the risk. That's silly. That's just silly, but that's what's going on here. That's what's going on here. Yep, that's what this is. So let's look at the Queen of Wands. But you're recognizing it, that, and that's the aspect of your shadow that you're integrating. And that's the old contract that's on the way out. Whether this is you or someone around you, because remember, energy can be reversed. Ten of swords in reverse. Like I said, it's the old contract on the way out. You're still working through this though. You're still working through it. Ten of swords. This is a deeply, deeply, deeply ingrained programming. This is a part of yourself that might apply to relationships and work, to your stability, to dynamics within your family, to even friendships. It could be across the board. It could be a lot of things. Hell, it could be... I don't even know how you restock on freaking toilet paper. Like, oh my gosh, I can't get too much toilet paper because what if I spend too much money on it and then I don't have enough money for other things? You know, it's like you overthink everything. I don't know, that was a shitty example, but you get what I'm saying. So just be mindful, be mindful of this. It's, it's, it's a very critical energy of yourself. It's like, what if I am so successful that I lose all that success overnight? What if I am so in love with this person and we have such a stable, amazing relationship that it gets ripped out from underneath me and I get blindsided and heartbroken instantaneously? It's the fear of the 10 of swords. You're leaving that fear behind you, but it's time to recognize that I don't need to fear that 10 of swords anymore. I don't need to fear my past anymore. My past is no longer gonna come back and haunt me. I've learned those lessons. I've learned those lessons. And I've integrated those lessons. And I've healed a really big part of myself. And I need to stop allowing my fears to get the best of me. I need to learn to tell my ego to shut the fuck. Sit down on Shannon, drink a glass of wine. That's the name of my ego. I name my ego Shannon. And anytime Shannon gets in my head, I'm like, yo, Shannon, chill out. Cause you know, I know I'm safe and I'm divinely protected, divinely directed, and everything is happening exactly as it needs to. And I know that everything's unfolding in divine right time. Okay? This is this is the fear of the ten of swords. Yep, and it is illusion. It's illusion. It's illusion scarcity mindset. High priestess five of pentacles. It's not real. It's not real. It's not real. It's not real. 
And I'll let you know a little secret. It's not real. Isn't that great? It's all illusion. Neptune, Pisces, woohoo. Illusion. Okay. Let's look at uh, Ace of Pentacles. <clears throat> Neptune is home in Pisces right now. That's why I said that, for those of you wondering. Ah, hot tamales. Yep. And then the second chance is you upgrading to that Empress energy, but you're not quite there yet. You're not quite there yet because you need to practice self-care. You need to integrate this aspect of your shadow. That's going to help you embody divine feminine energy. And when you're in divine feminine energy, you upgrade to Empress, right? An Empress is receptive, abundant, loving, nurturing, and they're able to set boundaries and say no, and they're not codependent. They know how to Heal self, love self, nurture self, and also do that for other people, but they have their bucket and they got the bucket for everybody else in their environment. And once this bucket is empty, they're not gonna go and share their bucket with everybody else. They're like, mm, sorry, this bucket's empty and this bucket is just for me. So no, you don't get any of this bucket. That's not rude, it's just how the cookie crumbles. That's my boundary. It's a boundary, it's not disrespectful, it's a boundary. Very nice. And that is what allows you to have very stable Ten of Pentacles dynamics, boundaries, respecting yourself, respecting what you want, etc. I really like this. So it's like a transformation. This is awesome. I'm really excited. Ah, this is really nice. You have two sixes in reverse. Okay, so we have the Six of Swords in reverse and the Six of Pentacles in reverse, Knight of Wands. Okay, here, there's a fear of freedom. There's a fear of freedom. Allow, okay, so you might have a very, uh, you might be sitting on a lot of masculine energy, keeping yourself in a very confined space, keeping yourself to a very rigid or structured schedule, having the tendency to do that, having the tendency to push, 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 and not allowing yourself to be receptive, Empress in reverse, right? That's a blocked receptive energy, especially with the Six of Pentacles in reverse, it means that you're stopping yourself from receiving, and that's what's stopping you from moving forward. And that's what needs to change here, right? Knight of Wands is Sagittarius energy. It's a very free-flowing, very um, fun, playful, light-hearted energy. You might aspire to be an energy like that or have someone in your environment that's really pushing you to be more so like that. Um, and that is what this transformation is about, right? It's about allowing yourself to get out of this rigidity allowing yourself to open up your heart space, be more feminine, be more nurturing, be more receptive to love, to stability, to a ten of pentacles, not having to have everything so hard won, so forceful. Allow things to flow to you. Allow yourself to be present. Sit at a table, eat breakfast, and don't think about anything. Just be like, dang, this food's amazing, right? Be present. This is a big transformation because this is not allowing your thoughts to travel too far ahead and too far in the past. This is a lot about being present, allowing your fears and distortions to not rule your mind. This is a lot about, <clears throat> as I lose my voice, learning to be uh, receptive in your feminine energy. And feminine energy is a present tense energy because that's how you receive your manifestations. Feminine energy manifests from the mind. Masculine energy brings manifestation into the physical. Um, so in order to manifest from thought, you need to be in the present tense because you manifest in the present tense. So it's time to be present, my dear. But this is what I have for you. I hope you enjoyed this reading. If you want a personal reading or a Reiki session, go ahead, book it down below through my website. Um, check out Patreon and check out Vimeo. Like, share, subscribe, give this video a thumbs up. I love you guys. I wish you the best and I'll see you next time.